Jam on toast. Hey there, We Are Movie Club. Welcome to week 27 of Hashtag We Are Movie Club. This week is my pick again, and it is Red vs. Blue Season 2. This is actually a continuation from Red vs. Blue Season 1, which We Are Movie Club did back in the beginning. It's like the second pick. I don't know, that was mine too. So the short sale on this one is that a medic shows up in the canyon, and the Blues try to kind of investigate what's going on with O'Malley. The smallest bit of expansion to that is that this is really where Rooster Teeth started experimenting with things, and they really put in a solid storyline instead of just putting in jokes they were making during Halo games. My love it for this is not only because it's a great setup for things to come, but it was very interesting to get to see inside Caboose's mind. Not really a spoiler at this point, but it's a very intriguing aspect of it. Uh, where we start seeing layers very close to Inception, if you've ever seen that movie. My hate for this was all the reactionaries that Rooster Teeth had to Season 1 coming out, because they were such an independent company, and they were just... They started out as, like, college guys doing a thing, working out of a spare bedroom. They were recording audio in the bathroom. I mean, it, it was a low-budget type thing, and that's just kind of how it was. But because they wanted to try to be successful, like any good business venture, they were listening to the feedback from people and they were like, oh, maybe we should do this, this, and this. And this, this, and this happened to be they took out the mic pips for the radio. Uh, they toned down some of the swearing. Uh, I, and that's what got them famous was lines like, you cock-biting fucktard. I'm not proud of it for them, but that's what got them famous. And hell, it's a good start to comedy at least. Plus, with all the changes Bernie was making with the, to actually add an actual story, it was kind of like sacrificial to begin with. Adding those things on top of it didn't really help. The MVP for this season, I'm going to say Caboose. Uh, watching them go back and forth between O'Malley and Caboose is just hilarious. And you kind of see Caboose grow into the lovable character that he becomes because O'Malley kind of fucks up his head. <laughs> it's just the facts of it. On to the categories. Aesthetics. I'll be honest, the aesthetics are not fantastic. The actual footage only takes up like a third of the screen, maybe half, depending upon what your ratios are. And the subtitles do come in underneath that at least, so that's helpful. But they were still working off the Xbox original hardware. They were still working off Halo Combat Evolved, the original Halo game. They were still exploiting a glitch that happened. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into what they were working with. Um, again, they took out the, the mic pips that made the, the speech actually sound more natural, to me at least. So uh, there's definitely some things to complain about. But the shots they set up and the way they used the resources they have were fantastic. I really got to hand it to them. And if you just look at the storyline and look at how they set up the shots for what they wanted to happen, I think they did a really good job, and I, I can't fault that. All that said, it doesn't mean that it comes out looking great. It, the audio, if you notice it, can be annoying throughout the entire thing, and there are some drawbacks, especially since they're, they're noted for a lot of audio dialogue, comedy, and you get a lot less in this than you did in the previous season. Um, so I'm definitely hoping that we see Halo 2 come into uh, this picture in Season 3. Um, but for now, aesthetics gets a 70. Character development. Rooster Teeth was really trying to find their strides on this. The characters were pretty much developed in Season 1, and they just kind of rehashed and used them again. There's this real quick introduction thing, which was actually a neat bit of exposition, where they're like, hey, this is this, this is this, this is this, from introducing Doc to the Blue members. But... Um, other than, like, O'Malley, and we don't really get a lot of character development. I think that's because maybe they didn't know where they wanted to take the story, so they didn't know how to build the characters for that. They just knew that they had to build up a premise for their... I, I fault season two a lot because it focused a lot less on characters and jokes and more on actually building a legitimate story to actually carry forward the series, which it did, and you have to give credit where credit's due. But character development, got a 75. Storyline. Now, I, I've been complaining that we sacrificed a lot for the story. Don't get me wrong, especially for where it goes, 
The story was really, really good. I actually really liked the story. I think the idea of bringing in the medic is actually a really good, funny bit to do. And given what has to happen to make uh, conflict arise with O'Malley, you needed new characters. And the shell bots probably weren't going to be the ones to do it. I, I don't know. There's definitely things that could have made the experience of the story better. So the execution wasn't top notch. But I definitely think the story itself, and again, if you look at it in the whole bit, is definitely worth a high praise. Uh, I definitely like this story, and I think it's it's worth it. Storyline gets a 9. Compulsion. Look, season 1, I'm guffawing the whole time. I'm belly laughing. I'm doing all that nonsense. This is not that intriguing a thing to watch. I really feel like like they just they started sprinting. They got tired. They dipped a little bit, and then they just ran a marathon uh, after they learned that not to sprint it. And I think that's what this is. I think it was a very important rest for them, but that doesn't mean that the experience is all that funny. It doesn't mean that it's all that wowing. It doesn't. There's a lot of things that's just like, eh. Let me watch one of the other seasons. They're a lot funnier. Pulsion gets an 88. Now, if you total all that up, you get an average of 80.75. Now, I'm obviously of the opinion that this is something everybody should watch. Everyone should get into Red vs. Blue because even if you don't like video games, it's some funny shit and it's actually got some really good story built into it if you pay attention in the early seasons. And then once you get out of Blood Gulch and you get to season 6, it gets amazing. But thank you for stopping on this journey with me. This will be uphill from here, and I can't wait to, to watch the rest of this and share it with you guys. I think it'll be a wonderful, wonderful thing. So this was a review for Hashtag We Are Movie Club. This week's pick was mine. Next week's pick is Neil. I think we are doing Space Captain Harlock. Some crazy anime thing like that. Go ahead and click on the links here. Be sure to check out the channel. See all the other nonsense that we're up to. And thanks for watching. Be sure to go check out all the fine folks that are involved in this video. Thanks for watching.